Welcome to another Orbiter video. In this little mini-series, we took off from Cape Canaveral, and the plan was to dock with the ISS. So in the previous video, we successfully completed a rendezvous, so currently we're just a little over three kilometers away from the ISS, and we're moving towards the ISS at a nice slow 1.41 meters per second. So in this last video, we're just going to uh, complete a dock, hopefully, and, and then that'll be the end of the series. And we'll, I'll talk more uh, about any possible future plans at the, at the end of this video. So let's go ahead and switch over to the normal view here. Let's unpause the simulator, and um, I'm definitely going to have to turn off that radio chatter. So let's uh, switch the nav over to 2, which is docking port number 1, and we'll press the HUD button to put that up on the, uh, on the screen. And let's go ahead and nav over to the other one and hit HUD again. So, so it looks like, based on where we're at going to the ISS, it would possibly make more sense to use this HUD, I think or I should say use this docking port, it looks to me like we're going in that direction. But if we wanted to, we could go essentially around the ISS. It doesn't make any difference. Um, the, the difficulty, I think, is basically the same. It just, it just takes a bit longer maybe to go over there than it would if we were to go to that one. Although, honestly, I can't actually tell exactly where that's at. So... And I don't think it shows you once you're in the external view. Nope. Um, I don't know. So we'll we'll go for we'll go for this one. Okay. So um, we don't need sync orbit up anymore. So we can just power that side off for now. Copy. Give us a better. Give us more to see on the main screen. On, uh, the so let's. Uh, Let's just start slowly moving in the direction where I see that corridor. It might actually be that I have to go around the ISS to the other side. I'm not actually sure, but it, to me, it looks like it looks like I'm flying in the direction of that corridor. So let's uh, use our linear translation to get our velocity vector kind of pointed in the general direction where we want to go, and a little bit of linear translation to start moving towards that way a bit faster. Uh, we don't want to do too much. Um, because all the velocity we put in, we have to take back out. So it's generally more efficient to put in just a little bit of velocity, you know, a few meters per second. I don't know exactly what the numbers would be that like NASA would use, but I'll say four meters a second. And then we're just gonna warp time forward at 10. Actually, you know what? Because I wanna make sure that we do rendezvous during the day, or well, we've already rendezvoused, I want to make sure we're docking during the day. Let me bring up map. So we only have, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to say 30 minutes, roughly, to, to get this done. Or else we're going to be in the dark and, it's going, and we're not going to be able to see things very well. So since that's the case, let's go ahead and put in a little bit more velocity to get over there more quickly. Just because we want to make sure that we get over there while we're still on the sunny side of Earth. So we're going to go all the way up to 10, which is probably too fast, but uh, but that's what we're going to do just to make sure that, uh, hopefully make sure that we get there while the sun is shining. Yeah, easily. So with that, with that velocity, we'll easily get there. It's just kind of hard for me to tell where that port's at. I think it's, okay, well, I'm pointing to the screen like you can see where I'm pointing. Um, all right, so we're going to go all the way. Yeah, so that was a bit what I thought. So we're basically going to the the back of the ISS and then coming forward, so I don't think we really saved ourselves any trouble uh, picking this port over the other one. So now I'm going to remove that velocity that I added in to kind of zero out my velocity with the ISS. I, I, I didn't need to go all the way to the end of the corridor either. And actually I'm overshooting it. Um, I can do this though. 
can use a little bit of that reverse, that more powerful reverse thrust engine. Okay, so now we're heading back towards the ISS at a half meter per second. So let's spin around so we can see where we're going. And let's go ahead and power this side off. And let me just go ahead and remove that velocity for now. And we'll start uh, getting ourselves in position to dock. Now I remember from past experience that when you're looking at this corridor, the part that's up is kind of, that that's the side you want to be uh, canopy up in that direction. So now we're going to start pushing ourselves laterally across. So before I even worry about like the plus and the X and all that stuff, I'm kind of just using these this box as a visual indicator to tell me approximately um, how I need to be positioned. But this is very approximate. The main thing is that this, this double line up here at the top just tells me that I want my canopy that direction. If I'm flipped around the other direction, I'm upside down. If I remember, from what I remember, you can still dock even if you're upside down, but like it doesn't not let you dock. So I'm just trying to float or uh, move my delta glider over into that, into the, and so I want to get inside those boxes essentially. I'm going to use a little bit of time work because I'm moving pretty slow here. So now we're getting really close to the uh, to the corridor. So now I'm going to start bringing out some of that velocity. Now I'm going to start paying more attention to what I see here. And I remember that, that the X and the cross need to be centered. The X is controlled by rotation, and the cross is controlled by uh, linear translation. So I'm going to translate this uh, or rather rotate this way to bring the X to the center line and then trans, uh, rotate this way to bring the X to the center point and then I'm gonna switch quickly to translation just so I can uh, and then this triangle I want it to be dead center and I can control that with uh, this type of rotation roll yep that's the wrong way Okay, so we've got the X dead center, we've got our roll correct, now we just need to translate down the corridor until we dock. We've already got the nose cone open, if we didn't, now would be a good time to do that. Um, again, I don't have non-spherical gravity sources enabled or other things like that that would make this harder, that would just make this harder than it needs to be. Um, if I continue to do anything more with Orbiter, maybe I'll worry about all those kinds of things at another another day, but not today. <laughs> Just getting here in the first place is a bit of a miracle to me. So we're moving towards the, uh, the docking port at about um, 0.8 meters per second. And while we're doing that, I'm watching my information over here my ro my role is good i probably won't have to worry about that so now i just need to get this crosshair in the center as well and the way i do that is just with linear translation so if the crosshair is like uh, you know it's up it's above the line so i need to use a two to push my vessel up to catch up to it and now it's, so you can see it's almost centered this way, so I need to use my, uh, my three to take out my left-right movement. This actually is really simple with, uh, without non-spherical gravity sources turned on. And now I've switched over to control thrust so that I'm just doing really small movements now. So I can see that my, uh, that crosshair is perfectly on the center line in terms of up-down, and now it's perfectly on the center line in terms of left-right. We probably will drift a bit here and there, so I'll just have to keep an eye on that. But at the moment, we are perfectly set up to dock. 
And if I recall correctly, if you have your red X in your crosshair anywhere within, um, I don't remember if it's the first concentric circle or the second one out, but if you've got you've got some slop there, it doesn't have to be perfect like it is here. And in fact, when you have non-spherical gravity sources enabled, it's pretty tricky to keep both of them perfect because both of them are drifting all the time. Um, but yeah, well, let's just uh, translate forward a little bit faster. You can see our cross is starting to slip a little bit, so we'll we need to go uh, a bit up, a bit this way, a bit out, and then a bit down, and we'll try to hold it right there. So right now we're moving forward at 1.25 meters uh, per second. And as we get closer, we'll slow things down, but we're still, you know, a, we're still a ways out. Um, I, I probably wouldn't add in any more velocity going forward. I would prefer just to use a bit of time warp if I were getting impatient. And we can see that our crosshair is starting to slip a little bit, so I need to translate a bit up and to the left to correct that. And these are all control thrust movements at the moment. So we're almost right there on the center again. So that's pretty good. And let's uh, just go forward a bit more. And you can see our crosshair slipping a little bit. So now we're at 75. I'm going to go ahead and slow things down a little bit. So I'm going to use a reverse translation to go down to say, that looks good to me. I need to translate a bit to the left and just a tiny bit up. So a bit of uh, control one and just a slight bit of control two. Now I'm going to take that out with control eight and control three. Fifty meters out, moving in at three quarters of a meter per second, and we're right now we're still just sliding right into the port. Okay, Jeff, uh, that seems to go uh, well for now. And it looks like we're slipping a little bit, so we need to translate a little bit to the right and a little bit up. So just a little bit of control three and a little bit of control two. And then we have to take that back out with control one and control eight. We're really close now. Let's go ahead and slow things down just a little bit more, half meter per second. I don't know what the uh, correct speed is for docking. This is actually a lot easier than <laughs> Than I thought it might be, but uh, yeah, the, those uh, complex light models really make things challenging. Seven. Just right there now. Let's look at the external view for the dock. Hands off. Two. One. Contact. There we are. It's amazing. <laughs> That is pretty cool, not gonna lie. Docking after after so much time. Um, yeah, Orbiter's pretty awesome. I definitely, definitely miss it. But uh, I just, I've forgotten so much about it that it's just made it difficult to to ever get back into it. You know, like you forget how to do something and this, the, the more time you're away from it, the harder it is to remember things, which makes you not get into it, which makes you forget more things. So it just becomes this, uh, uh, this repeating cycle, so. All right, that's going to be the end of the mission. So let me go ahead and pause the simulation, go to the overlay screen for a second. And uh, so that's the end of the mission. And I just want to kind of close out this video by by saying um, I, I'm not back. Uh, so I don't plan on doing this regularly. Um, I do hope that uh, I can re-familiarize myself with Orbiter and maybe do a video here and there. but back in whenever it was, you know, 2011, 2012, 2013, where I was in orbiter, you know, pretty much every day. 
and I was just really, you know, learning everything about it. And um, I was posting videos constantly, sometimes, you know, two or three a week. Uh, I'm definitely not going to get back to that point. I don't imagine ever, to be honest. But uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully I can post a video, um, you know, once a month or once every two months. But honestly, I don't know. This actually might be the only new video I put out. So just, just to be forewarned. Uh, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of an update and uh, hearing what I've been up to. And with that, I will see you in the next video, if there is one.